Welcome, beautiful people on the blockchain island Malta. I'm here with Joshua Elul. A big pleasure. Joshua, how are you doing? I'm doing quite good. I'm catching up with loads of work. How are you doing today? Very good as well. Um, can you tell the people who watch, who don't know you, um, who are you, what do you do, what do you work on? Yeah. Um, so I'm a lecturer in the Department of Computer Science and uh, recently at the University of Malta we've opened up the Center for Distributed Ledger Technologies. And um, the idea behind this new center is to bring academics from the technical world, from the legal world and from the business and finance world all under the same um, umbrella, under the same roof to work on this in, in new interesting area of blockchain and DLT. Um, my personal background is that of computer science and I've been doing a lot of work over the um, past decade or so in the Internet of Things and in virtual machine design. And um, this is really what uh, piqued my interest in um, blockchain and smart contracts um, from a very number of different angles. So how can we create uh, virtual machines that um, operate on top of blockchain systems, much like, like Ethereum, and then how can we integrate uh, blockchain and DLT systems with the Internet of Things. Mm -hmm. uh, your way into this all, you mentioned it, um, where you also, um, when did you hear the first time, for example, about Bitcoin? So I heard about Bitcoin quite early on, so probably around 2010. Wow, like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and you um, tried it out? Um, so, I mean, I, I was just reading into it. Interesting idea, decentralized currency. Um, I, 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 I kick myself because I didn't actually get into it back then. Um, when I heard about the idea of um, decentralizing money, I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Not my area. Um, but then I really got interested when I started hearing about Ethereum and decentralizing applications on top of the blockchain. Um, so like I said, I wish I would have taken Bitcoin more serious back then. Yeah. So here at the faculty, you also have a department for uh, artificial, artificial intelligence. Yep. Uh, in your eyes, um, how do you see that the world is changing through technology and what do you believe are like the big shifts that we will go through in the next decades? Yep. Um, so a lot of what we're seeing in computer science uh, in general um, are all based upon algorithms that have been there much long ago. So um, there is very little new under the sun that hasn't already been there. What's happening, which is really changing and creating the sort of paradigm shift, is ranging from having more computational power, allowing us to generate faster um, algorithms, uh, exploring much larger search spaces, and also the generation of data models um, and bigger models, which allow us to come up with um, more intelligent algorithms in terms of artificial intelligence. Um, now that we have uh, sort of brought together Merkle trees, the, um, uh, the decentralized algorithms, consensus protocols, uh, to, to for, maybe for somebody who doesn't know yeah. about the Merkle tree, maybe you can explain. Yeah. It so a Merkle tree is the the principle which really um, allows a blockchain to have immutability and uh, long term tamper proof records, um, wh whereby if you tamper some old data all the way up to the latest block or up to the latest data, you can notice that um, it, it's actually been affected. So the, these concepts have been there um, ages ago. What um, Satoshi Nakamoto in his uh, Bitcoin paper did is he brought together a lot of these concepts and said, look, plugging them together, we now have this means of having a decentralized uh, network. Um, it is decentralization of services along with plugging in artificially intelligent models and uh, the Internet of Things, which really uh, give us the potential for new applications, the, the potential for um, connecting sensors to your home and sensors on the back of, let's say, a courier's truck, which will allow for payment to be sent to the particular distributor only if the package arrives at your place. Um, so th these are the cool applications that we could eventually get to. Obviously, there's a lot of challenges that we need to overcome, and that's why it's quite interesting for computer science. Mm -hmm. And now the big news is basically that uh, Malta also um, has a, a specialized format to educate on, on, the, on that specific topic, right? That's right. Um, so when the, the legislation was coming out, um, we did provide some co consultancy in terms of um, the technical aspects. And we started to notice that um, there's like quite a big gap between the technical people, the legal people, and the business and finance people. And um, then we started to realize that we not only need to educate our technical people and get them up to scratch with the new challenges ahead, however, there is this 
this demand to come up with an educational program that can bridge the gaps between the lawyers, the techies, and the business and finance people. Because what blockchain and DLT is really bringing together is this environment where all the different professions are working really close in tandem. Um, so at the University of Malta, we are um, developing and we've proposed a new program which will start in October 2019, which is a multidisciplinary master's program allowing technical people to get advanced technical knowledge in blockchain and DLT, but also get an introduction to the law and the business areas. And the same for the other specializations. A lawyer could be able to take this uh, master's and get advanced uh, master's law in blockchain and DLT, but also get an introduction to blockchain and smart contract programming, mm -hmm. and the same for business and finance. Um, so who is who is this for? Um, Yep. So the main targets of the masters are um, IT graduates, legal graduates, and business and finance graduates. So we're, we're really looking at accepting anyone from any area. We, we could also accept, uh, depending upon um, where someone comes from, uh, so for, from a different route, subject to having sufficient background to take a number of different units that will be offered. However, it's really meant to allow anyone within three streams to be able to get mm -hmm. into the program. Um, I sense that um you know, maybe you can explain me this. Um, in Malta, we have a big faculty for, for accounting and also law, and that's coming from, um, yeah, I mean, in an economic dra or economic background. Basically, that there is a lot of law firms, there's a lot of accounting firms, there's a lot of um, corporate services and that stuff. Um, does this also go hand in hand that we have the new legislation now, and uh, therefore ed educational programs are needed to? Um, yeah, basically uh, set up a workforce in the future. Yeah, definitely. So I think Malta has proven itself over the past decade or two um, uh, because of the legislative framework uh, surrounding gaming to really become a leader. And since Malta uh, attained this sort of know-how in setting up legislative uh, regul regulatory frameworks, um, it did exactly the same thing now with DLT. Um, now that we have this framework, yes, indeed, we need the expertise in the different areas. We need the expertise for blockchain DLT techies, for blockchain DLT lawyers, and for the business and finance people. Mm -hmm. So it definitely goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And maybe a, a difficult question, but I wonder um, how um, how confident are you that uh, or like um, this technology is 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 quite disruptive. It's quite young. It's quite new. Are we one hundred percent sure what we do here? And like, how do we expect this? Um, to change also. I mean, maybe in a couple of years uh, there's, there's something new coming out and, and, and it's all changing again. That's right. Are you prepared to um, um, like adapt uh, uh, and, and, and adjust the, the course? Yep. Um, so before talking about the course, let's start with uh, the potential for a disruption and the potential that this disruption might be overhyped as such. That's, um, a, that's a good question that yeah. I would also have. I mean, here we at the university, where, I mean, in the market, in the business, there are a lot of people from marketing, from business, yep. they want to make an ICO, they want to make a lot of money, right. uh, they don't really maybe, um, s s like, it's not yet out there, what yep. is the what is the killer app on the blockchain, maybe it's just money, you know, because yep. it's, it's very good, maybe it's maybe there are other things, but maybe not, yeah, That's so right. what's, and at the university, I, I, I suspect that here should be the place for the truth and, like, the real heart technology and where you actually have the products and where you also find out okay it actually doesn't work that's right so whenever i'm asked the question people say is it all hype um i always say it's not all hype but yes there is hype um i mean just like the dot-com bubble the, the hype cycle um that would that the dot-com bubble went through um it's it obviously seems as though we are going through a similar hype cycle now um at some point we ex um, based upon uh, the past we expect that history repeats itself if if we are in a hype cycle, yes, we expect that it will crash at some point. Now, does that mean that all the technology is useless? Um, if we look back at the internet hype cycle and the crash, where are we today? I mean, all of the uh, Facebooks, Googles, all, a lot of the stuff that we use today weren't even there in the um, dot-com bubble. Um, so what do we expect from this DLT hype? Um, what, what is the big change that DLT is proposing? It's proposing decentralization. Um, if we really want to decentralize certain services, is it all hype? No. Uh, do we see potential to remove certain uh, trust from certain uh, central authorities? Yes, I think there is potential definitely there. Should we be decentralizing everything? Probably not. So I think it's more of a matter of deciding what needs decentralizing and using blockchain and DLT there. Um, I think if we use that as a principle, then we have a, a solid um, case for creating applications. Mm -hmm. 
Can you maybe give another uh, overview of the university? What's special about it? What kind of people come here? Um, what are you proud about maybe? Yep, so the nice thing about the university is that um, it has a faculty in mainly every area. So we have a degree program um, for any area under the sun. There might be one or two which um, people tend to go abroad for. However, it's um, it's a very large university um, taking somewhere between 12 to 14,000 students a year. So it's comparable with large universities or large universities abroad. Um, there's quite a lot of um, academic research and world world-renowned academic research going on in Malta. There's quite a lot of world-renowned um, professionals, uh, academics rather, at the university. Um, so the nice thing about working at, specifically at this university is because we have all the different faculties and all the different um, degree programs and expertise, it's very easy to meet someone who you want to collaborate with um, and collaborate with someone from a completely different area. So um, I've been speaking to a number of different individuals who are now getting interested in blockchain and DLT, not from the tech area, but how can it be applied to different um, areas that they work within. So I think that is one main selling point of this university, the fact that it provides so such a diverse range of courses and uh, it brings together academics from all sorts of different areas. Mm -hmm. um, if you look into um, uh, the whole globe uh, in terms of education on, on, on blockchain matters, um, what other universities have programs yes. um, and why should somebody come to Malta? That's right. Um, so the most renowned program is the cryptocurrency uh, and dig 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 digital currencies course at the University of Nicosia. In Cyprus. In Cyprus, exactly. And um, that's, um, it seems to be more of an online based course. And the course that we're going to be offering is not focusing only on the digital currency aspect. However, it's going to be more focusing on the blockchain technology aspect and not just from the technology implementation it's we're going to be focusing on the multidisciplinary aspects that are required from uh, the technical the legal and the business and finance so I think really where we are trying to take this new approach is the in the, the multidisciplinary interdisciplinary nature behind the program now why should students come here specifically and um, they should come here if they want to get into the ecosystem of blockchain and, and uh, DLTs and get m an understanding not of only their particular specialization however to get a feeling of also where does that specialization fit in with the greater picture. And also Malta becoming or trying to become or even you might say it has become the blockchain island and with the regulatory framework and companies coming to Malta it's probably a good place to come if you want to get uh, your first steps into such an industry in Malta. And it's a nice place. Uh, exactly, <laughs> not today but you Okay, should, yeah. uh, thank you so much. Maybe a last word. Um, where do you see the University of Malta in the next let's say five years? Um, so the next five years. Or your department. Maybe. Yeah, so uh, the University, well the Center for Distributed Ledger Technologies, what we would like to see in, in the next coming year is to really have our program as a world-renowned program in blockchain and DLT. Moving forward, uh, we want to become a center of excellence in terms of research. So we want to build collaboration with different uh, industrial partners, other uh, universities are around the world to work on cutting edge research to, to move blockchain to the next uh, step. Then beyond that, as a university, we're definitely looking into all the other interesting areas and the up and coming um, uh, emerging technologies, uh, artificial intelligence, the internet of things, quantum technologies. They're all things that um, people are looking at at, at this university. Awesome. Joshua, it was a pleasure. Thank you so Excellent. much. And I say thank you for watching. Buy Bitcoin, be free. See you in the next video. You have a good coffee? Uh, yes. So there are a few good cafeterias, not in, in the office. Coffee circus is, is pretty good. There's like a few small cafeterias. You have to learn which coffee at the particular cafeteria is the best one. So over a span of a week or two, you get an idea. Okay.